I'm talking about uh, before the European invaders, imperialists came to this continent. All right, and so we have to learn what what our what our uh, ancestors left us because they left us wealth, wealth of knowledge. Okay, wealth of knowledge and how to live as human beings and how to protect our our uh, planet, Mother Earth, because we're destroying it. And so she's going to be talking about one of our freedom fighters. That is Cuauhtémoc. He was the last spokesperson because we didn't have kings or queens. That's a European thing. We had spokespeople and we had councils of elders where they had decided that instead of the uh, European invaders slaughtering us uh, and exterminating us, that we had to step back. And that's what they did, and that's what Cuauhtémoc did. But he, that he paid, and he was sacrificed, he was tortured. Interpreté, ¿verdad? Solo hablo español. Y vamos a hablar sobre Cuauhtémoc. Pero antes que nada, agradecer a nuestro Padre Sol, a nuestra Madre Tierra, a nuestros cuatro elementos, nuestros cuatro rumbos, por este día, por permitirnos estar reunidos luchando por la misma causa, ¿verdad? Entonces... Oh, I'm going to translate for her, and she, uh, the, the first thing that she wants to say is that we, uh, you know, we honor the four directions, the, you know, the Sonatiu, which is, uh, you know, the, the, the east, where the sun comes out, the west, where the sun sets, uh, the north, with the, which is our consciousness, and the south, which is, set, which is, uh, which is uh, willpower. So we, we honor the four, four elements, Fire, water, earth, wind, and uh, and we will begin with this presentation. Y pues vamos a hablar sobre la invasión hacia nuestras comunidades, como se ha venido dando de siempre. We're going to be talking about the invasion against our communities, how it has occurred. Me van a apoyar aquí mis hermanos, <laughs> igual si cava y si no, también para poder tener unos cantos y poder elevarles a nuestro... My sisters are going to accompany me with some music so that we can raise the, the spirit, uh, uh, you know, the dynamic of our spirit. Mm -hmm. Quiero que se van con un canto. Sí. O me pedo a Tlaxo Camati, Bloque Nahuatl, pues primeramente agradeciendo aquí a, al universo, a las energías de este espacio, a cada uno de sus corazones, este, Tlaxo, Tlaxo Camati, por estar aquí, por tomar el tiempo, y venimos aquí pues con mucho respeto para con ustedes y compartir, ¿verdad? conocer nuestra historia. We're, we're here to, uh, you know, to, uh, to learn about our history, so uh, uh, with, uh, with your respect, we're going to, uh, you know, do a little uh, uh, offerings. They're offerings. That's what they are. They're not just songs. They're offerings to the four elements. Sí, pues un agradecimiento a la energía del día de hoy, que es un día nueve at, nueve agua. Today's energy is nine water. Oh, it's Capitan. Oh, okay. Nueve is nueve agat. 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 Okay. Uh, so today is uh, nine uh, bamboo agat. Yeah, que representa pues a rectitud, representa seguir firmes. Which represents to be firm in our position. Okay. 
We have several programs, correct, <laughs> all the way from uh, teaching our uh, ESLers, the young workers that come from various parts of this continent to come and work here. Uh, we have uh, different uh, different kinds of activities. Um, we also uh, do not uh, other activities such as uh, the Body of Defense Committee meets here, and we were involved in uh, taking down. The, the uh, treacherous and uh, uh, Columbus statue that was in the city hall, which was a, a, a disrespect. It was a slap in the face. It was an attack against the indigenous people. We were involved in taking it down. We were also involved in taking down the felon statue, which was also representing colonialism and the repression of the indigenous people. 
So um, we do not take any money from any kind of government entity because we believe in self-determination. And so, uh, as I said before, uh, how we maintain ourselves is from you, from all of you. And uh, and so this is the, this is this is the uh, thinking of the uh, uh, the struggle for self determination. Y hoy vamos a hablar un poquito acerca de de Cuauhtémoc, nuestro último Tlatuani Mexica. So now we're going to speak about Cuauhtémoc, which was the last uh, Tlatuani spokespeople Mexica, which is uh, Mexica is a uh, is a uh, uh, a people that began in Mexico Tenochtitlan, which is now called Mexico City. And that Vasquez had uh, received information that there, there was a lot of wealth here in this continent. And uh, that's what sparked the uh, so-called expedition. En 1511, se formó esa expedición en donde supuestamente Hernán Cortés la iba a dirigir, ¿verdad? In 1511, uh, this uh, uh, expedition uh, uh, from Cuba, Hernán Cortés had gotten word, Pero even, él, though, uh -huh. even though he wasn't supposed to come here, he took the uh, uh, advantage of, of uh, coming into this uh, territory. Pero él al ver que había sido removido de esa expedición, que él no sería el que lideraría esa expedición, Eh, se adelantó a los hechos, ¿verdad? Y hizo algo ilegal, adelantándose a, a la expedición hacia México de un sitio. Hernán Cortés was not supposed to come, but he took advantage, knowing that there was so much wealth here, that he went along without the permission of the, uh, of the monarchy. Y Russia. 
we have nothing to gain from that. We should oppose it. And, o sea, Don Juan Antonio Correjel, el poeta nacional de Puerto Rico y gente de la Liga Socialista puertorriqueña, nos enseñó, nos enseñó que siempre nuestras primeras palabras tienen que ser dirigidas a la actualidad, lo que está pasando en el mismo día que estamos hablando. Para nosotros hoy, 27 de febrero, pues tenemos que hablar de la guerra imperialista en la Ucrania, Ucrania. Nos tenemos que oponer. Es una guerra manufacturada por los Estados Unidos. ¿ya? Digan lo que digan, fue a raíz de los Estados Unidos que se desarrolla esa guerra. Pero también, pero los rusos no son santos. También nos tenemos que oponer a la invasión, las acciones imperialistas de los rusos. ¿sí? Porque están, no hay, están matando a gente en la Ucrania y lo van a seguir haciendo. Y cual, todos los pretextos que dan los rusos para justificar su, su, su invasión no tienen peso. Si los analizamos, vemos de que no tienen peso. ¿ya? Y nosotros, como antiimperialistas, como pueblos colonizados, nos tenemos que oponer a los imperialismos, sea norteamericano o ruso. As colonized people, we need to oppose imperialism, U.S. imperialism, Russian imperialism. We have nothing to gain from them. We need to oppose that war by any means necessary, by whatever it is we can do. When we hear this demonstration, we need to be out there supporting that demonstration to oppose imperialism. The three primary arguments that the Russians have advanced for their invasion have no weight. If we really study them and look at them, we see that they fall. They fall quickly. There's, there's no substance to them. Um, and so I just want to say that we need to, to oppose the war in the Ukraine. Um, we hope as an organization, we hope that the United States doesn't participate and go in against the Russians. You know, but um, until last night or this morning on my way here, I read the headlines and it said something about uh, Putin. The Russians have put their nuclear uh, forces on alert. That's really scary and it's dangerous. I mean, they could blow up the world. And, you know, and for what? You know, for their ego. But we need to be prepared to act if the time comes to take to the streets, to oppose it, to educate our communities, to say, this is not a war that's beneficial. I'm, we need to oppose it. February, as Black History Month, every day is Black History, right? But February is also important for Mexicanos for two reasons, or more actually, but we're going to focus on two very briefly. One is February 2nd. It's not just a date on a calendar. February 2nd is the day that the treaty, the so-called Treaty of Peace between the United States and Mexico was signed. That treaty through that treaty, I should say, Mexico, the Mexicano people, come on in. We lost. We didn't lose because we're still fighting for it. 50% of the national territory of Mexico. And we need to understand that. That if you see this map here, it shows you the land base that was stolen militarily from Mexico. In 1846-1848, which was the U.S. invasion in Mexico, Mexico was coming out of the war for independence. And so it was basically still recuperating. It was still a weak nation. It wasn't really consolidated. So that land was lost. And 
the, the Yankees claim, well, we paid you $15 million. No, you paid who, uh, Santana, who was president at that time, but in reality, if you look at history, he wasn't the president anymore. He had been, um, for his actions, he had, been, he had lost the presidency in Mexico. So he just said, hey, I'll take $15 million and sign over that piece of land. Yeah, why not? Which is what he did. Since that time, Mexicano people have been colonized here in our own homeland in the north, in north of Mexico, what some people call that slam, you know, but it's occupied territory for us. We are still, you know, here we are being denied medical care, housing, health care, etc., a whole list of things. We are in the same boat or the same situation as African people in the United States, in the African, in the African people in the diaspora. The African people in the diaspora, uh, meaning in exile, right, kidnapped, are basically treated as colonial subjects to this day. They still lack adequate health care, housing, education, etc., etc., etc. They're still treated as, as second-class citizens as much as the white people say, oh, no, we're all equal and stuff. But yeah, we say, that's right, yeah. Look at Floyd. Tyrone Martin, right? Ring a bell. Any of those names? That should teach us now. We're not, we, the only way that we're equal is when they got the gun pointed at us, and then they say that we're equal. We're equal to all the other dead native peoples, dead Mexicans, dead African peoples that, have, that they have brought about um, during the periods of colonization. Now, that is one of the reasons. Oh, the other reason why February is important to Mexicano indigenous people is because <clears throat> today, on a day like today, February 27th, asesinaron a Cuauhtémoc in the Ibera. Today, February 27th, is a historic day for the Mexican indigenous people because, I think I'm right, but I may be confusing it, but it's a day that Cuauhtémoc, the last Tlatuani of the Mexica people, was murdered by the Spaniards on, in what is today called Honduras. And so many Mexican indigenous people, we remember, and we still uphold Cuauhtémoc, but you'll be hearing a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. So today, you know, we talk about black and brown unity. And it's important because we're not our, our own enemy. See? We have a common enemy that we have to oppose, that we have to fight against. The same enemy that stole our lands, that stole the African people from Africa, that has maintained them and us in a colonial relationship to the federal government, to the US. Uh, some people have called it a prison house of nations, because we talk about the Mexican nation, the new African black nation, the red nation, you know, the Puerto Rican nation. And so all of these nations are colonized, are jailed, if you will, by the US empire. And we collectively have to work together to fight against imperialism in the United States, to fight to free ourselves from that jailhouse of nations. And as I said earlier, I was gonna talk a little bit about the ARP. I also have come up from Los Angeles, I used to work in Los, in Los Angeles with the National Chicano Moratorium Committee. That committee had a strong working relationship with the AARP in Los Angeles. And every year when we had our, our marches, activities to commemorate August 29th, the AARP would come and speak and teach about the, the necessity. Uh, este, Pachalia, Silvia Lopez. She's also part of an organizing uh, organization and it's uh and it's in defense of the domestic workers because the you own it Mi nombre es 
Silvia López y también soy bien malcriada. <risa> eh, entonces, eh, nosotros, como ya mencionó la compañera, ah, eh, somos eh, mayormente trabajadoras del hogar, ¿verdad? Y, y estamos organizando para que es, este trabajo del hogar sea realmente un trabajo digno. Nuestras comunidades, nuestra comunidad negra, nuestras comunidades... Eh, latinas, nuestras comunidades indígenas han sido siempre sometidas a hacer este, este trabajo, sí, a veces sin paga, ¿verdad? A veces porque uh, con, con una mínima paga y es, es como ahora mismo, aparentemente, esa es una forma también de esclavitud y sobre todo para nosotras las mujeres, ¿no? Porque si, si somos mujeres de color, mujeres negras, todavía tenemos mucha más opresión, ¿no? Simplemente por el hecho de ser mujeres. So what my compañera was saying is that, as I said previously, they belong to this industry of domestic workers, and uh, and what she's saying is that is that uh, you know that we're also being oppressed, uh, you know, as workers, where we you know many times uh, they're not uh, paid well. When they get sick, they're not you know they don't have any benefits. And, and it's not only just indigenous people, it's also African people that are in this industry. And uh, mostly uh, non-white people that are participating in, in this industry. So there's a lot of exploitation and oppression. And, uh, and, and especially, uh, it's mostly women. So it's an oppression against the uh, women. And it's a form of also of uh, slavery because they've not paid what they are supposed to be paid. Uh, and so they fight for, for uh, you know, their dignity. They fight for, you know, being well paid as workers and also as women. Y, uh, entu este es, un, es una antología de esta, con, de esta, con las voces de estas mujeres escritas aquí. Estas voces eh, fueron, fueron escuchadas en un grupo que hicimos que formamos para, para principalmente para sanar porque a veces cuando venimos aquí y hacemos este trabajo no parece que nos consideren como humanos no como personas que tienen una vida que han pasado una historia para estar aquí y entonces en este libro se reunió todas estas voces de estas mujeres trabajadoras del hogar y cada una de ellas tenía una historia y, y cuando contamos esas historias esas historias nos ayudaron también a sanar todo ese dolor, todas esas cosas que hicimos, toda esa sanación colectiva. Y eso nos ayudó. Y después de ahí fue que decidimos hacer este, esta antología con el apoyo de una persona muy importante para este libro que fue Karina Muñiz y una organización eh, que, nos, que se llama Freedom Voices, que fue quien nos apoyó también para poder sacar este libro. Entonces... Vamos a leer un poquito de por qué nos llamamos las malcriadas. De ahí surgió este nombre de las malcriadas. She said in this book, this book has the anthology or history or expressions and re or reflections of the women workers in this industry. Because, uh, you know, it, it was a form of healing from the oppression and the exploitation. And so they, they saw that it was necessary to, to put together these uh, stories of, uh, of their experiences as working women. And, uh, and it was uh, done in a collective way, an organized way. The book is written by, uh, Karina Muñiz. Ella apoyó, nos apoyó a todas para poder sacar este libro. So she was, uh, she was one of the supporters, and the organization that, uh, that also supported was the Freedom, Freedom Voices. So this is basically a reflection of their experience uh, on, as uh, working women. Lulu Rebolló esto. Oye, muchacha, ve y sírvele a tu hermano. Calienta su comida. ¿Y por qué yo? Él puede hacerlo. Mira tú. ¿Cómo que por qué? 
porque eres mujer. No, tía, él tiene sus manitas y lo puede hacer. Mira tú, muchacha malcriada, los hombres no son para la cocina. Ese es el puesto de una mujer. Ándale, en vez que andes ahí trepando árboles, jugando canicas o jugando béisbol, y ayuda en tus quehaceres a tu mamá. No, tía, ¿por qué no le dices a mi hermano? Todos somos lo mismo. No te digo, sigues de malcriada. Una buena mujer sabe cocinar, bordar, coser, sentarse con las piernas bien cerradas, calladas. Pero tú eres una malcriada. Pues fueron, fueron por demás los consejos de la tía. Esta malcriada no solo no quería que le asignaran tareas por su género, sino que se negaba a la autoridad paterna, contradiciendo de vez en cuando, desafiando el sistema patriarcal de la familia, que le costó por lo menos unas buenas bofetadas. Todo por la altanería de esta malcriada. Y cuando tenía más edad y pensaba en mi tía, en todas las recomendaciones que me daba para ser una buena mujer, me preguntaba por qué, si ella había sido una mujer, no de su tiempo, sino que retó y escandalizó lo establecido, desafiaba la autoridad paterna, se defendía del abuso, dejó al novio en la iglesia porque no le dio la gana casarse, tuvo un hijo sola, fue duramente juzgada, como una mujer sin valor, como una mala mujer porque vivió su vida como quiso vivirla, pero porque no siguió lo establecido. Tal vez pensaba que salirse de lo establecido, cuestionar, hacer lo que quieres hacer y ser, era demasiado duro, demasiada soledad. Y no quería que yo fuera juzgada, señalada o no incluida, por pensar y decidir por mí misma. Pero ser una malcriada ya estaba sembrado en mí. No hubo nada que hacer, aunque en estos tiempos no estoy sola, porque ¿cómo hemos proliferado las malcriadas? The naughty girl. Hey muchacha, go and serve your brother some, some hot food. Why me? He can do it himself. Look at you asking why. Why? Because you're a girl. No, dear. He has his hands. He can do it. Listen, you little naughty girl, muchacha malcriada. Men are not made for the kitchen. Women are. This is our role. So go on. Instead of climbing trees and playing marbles or baseball, Go and help your mom with the chores. No, tía. Why don't you tell my brother to go do that? We're, we're all the same. What did I just say to you, naughty girl? A good woman knows how to cook, clean, sweep, and sew. Sit down with your legs crossed and not speak. But you, you have had, you have, have had bad manners. Well... This is bad mannered, this bad mannered girl never listened to the advice of her tia. Not only did she refuse to do work based on solely on her, on her gender, she resisted the paternal authority of her father, talking back, defying the patriarchal family system. And this bad mannered naughty girl got her share of slaps for it. When I was older and I thought of my aunt and all the recommendations she gave me on how to be a good woman, I wondered why. She had been a woman ahead of her time. She had challenged the establishment, defied patriarchal authority, defended herself against abuse, left her groom at the altar because she did not feel like marrying. She raised her child as a single mom. She was judged harshly, deemed 
a worthless woman, a bad woman, because she lived her life as she wanted to live it, because she did not follow what was established. Maybe she thought paving a new path, questioning, doing what she wanted to do was too hard, too lonely. Maybe she didn't want me to be judged, singled out, excluded for thinking for myself. But the seeds of being a malcriada, a misbehaving, rebellious woman, had already been planted. And in these times, I am not alone. We malcriadas are multiplying. Yeah. <laughs> Yo siempre me siento súper orgullosa que anduve aquí en las calles de Oakland eh, con mi mamá eh, en las marchas, ¿verdad? Gritando, sí se puede. Después de que ella ha sido trabajadora del hogar, yo creo que desde que nació, desde que aprendió a agarrar un, una escoba, ¿verdad? Ella fue trabajadora del hogar. Ha sido una persona muy sufrida y para mí me orgullece el ver andado en las calles de Oakland con ella, el que ella haya ido a Sacramento a decir, Apoyo esta propuesta para las trabajadoras del hogar, ¿verdad? Ella ha puesto su granito de arena para que por fin, ¿verdad? Después de ocho años de lucha que tuvimos para la, los derechos de las trabajadoras del hogar, se diera, ¿verdad? El derecho a horas extras uh, para las trabajadoras del hogar. Así es que me siento súper orgullosa de mi mamá, que está aquí en la, en la portada de la vida también. She did write her reflection, but it didn't get to print on time. But uh, she's saying that she's very proud of being part of this organization, and uh, being, uh, she's very proud of this uh, group of women that have struggled for the last eight years uh, to, to gain a, uh, a right for the domestic workers. They went up to Sacramento and demanded you know, benefits for the, for the domestic workers. She herself has been a domestic worker since she was 12 years old. Her mother, all her life, has been a domestic worker, and her and she and her mother are in this uh, are, are in this print itself. Uh, you know, because they've been involved, and they're they're very proud of the of the struggle that that they have been involved in as domestic workers as women. Thank you. I'm supposed to be here, but. Uh, one of the compañeros had surgery. He was a uh, he was a soldier in the Vietnam War, and uh, and during that time, and and uh, many many of our our soldiers that fought, uh, you know, for the imperialist war, you know, were maimed, injured, and they have not uh, you know been able to uh, recover. And so compañero Jesse is one of them. So when he came back, he participated in the Brown Berets. The Brown Berets have, uh, were uh, basically a, uh, a form of a paramilitary defense of raza, and they still exist. They, uh, their, you know, their, their, their position is self-determination for raza. And so they sent me a statement that uh, they asked me to read to you. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Race National Organization La Causa uh, started in 1967. We would like to thank you for the honor of being invited guests to this most significant and important observance of Black History Month by the San Jose Chicano Moratorium Resistance Council, Centro Atlan Chicomostoc, and the Body of Defense Committee and the San Jose community. Our organization was founded in 1967 in response to the social injustices, racism, oppression, and inequality that was forced upon our people by a system in this country that was not meant to serve us, but to deplete us. We were also rising up against police brutality and the Vietnam War that was disproportionately and indiscriminately kidnapping our young men, taking them down a path of death, 
maiming, and destruction. Currently in Mexico, the new president is transforming the nation, and one of his focuses are the native indigenous people, first people of Mexico, including the Afro-Mexicanos. For the first time in Mexico's history, the Afro-Mexicanos have received the status of first native indigenous people, allowing them to qualify for all the financial, educational, health care, and social programs allotted for the indigenous natives. Also, for the first time in Mexico's history, Afro-Mexicanos are being counted in the census, making them official. Following the conquest of Mexico by the Spanish invaders in 1519, it is estimated that 200,000 West African slaves were brought to Mexico as part of the slave trade. Black slaves were primarily used by the Spanish as foremen and overseeing the Mexican indigenous population. Much of the male slave population married indigenous women. The marriages between the indigenous and the black slaves resulted in, in many mixed race offspring, causing the blacks to go almost forgotten as their bloodlines mixed with the indigenous community. This almost ensured from Mexican history, uh, this almost erasure from Mexican history intensified during the post-Mexican Revolution when indigenous and European bloodlines, rather than African heritage, was brought to the forefront as a source of national pride. That has now changed with the current president of Mexico. Last year, the president of Mexico invited the son of Martin Luther King Jr. to participate in his ceremony in the state of Oaxaca, observing the 190th anniversary of the execution of one of Mexico's founders and first Afro-Mexican president, Vicente Guerrero, executed on February 14, 1831. This is just one example of Mexico amplifying and bringing to the forefront the pride and honor Mexico has for the African Afro-Mexicanos and recognizing their historical contributions to the communities, cities, and states they settled in since the 1500s. La Bamba, song and folkloric dance, is one of Mexico's world-renowned global cultural contributions to the art of music and dance. La Bamba's roots are African. From religion, astronomy, music, arts, and language, the Africans in Mexico have made contributions that have transcended from generations after their arrival. And today we celebrate, appreciate, acknowledge, and with much gratitude, thank them for their beauty, not only as the first indigenous native people of Mexico, but also for their profound inherent love for all humanity. On behalf of our organization, we humbly thank you again for the opportunity to participate in today's event, observing with great pride Black History Month, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Theater Universal. Thank you. Uh, from the People's uh, uh, for Socialist Liberation, would you like to say, uh, say some words? Would you like to? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, um, now uh, we have uh, concluded with the with the agenda, and now we're going to uh, you know have a uh, a gathering. We're going to have some food. Please stay because we have lots of fruit food here, and uh, you know we can take our chairs outside. There's a table out there so that we can uh, you know enjoy the food. So right now we're going to warm tortillas. And, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully you'll like the, the food. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your support. And please, you know, help us, you know, raise the funds so that we can, you know, pay the rent for the Centro Atlan Chico Mostoc. Uh, we have $300 more that we need. So we're selling a lot of stuff that's on the table. Thank you so much. Que viva Black and Brown Unity. Viva! Viva Black and Brown Unity. We got black and brown unity. Yeah. Yeah. Unity, unity, that's what we want. Black and brown unity.
freedom voices. So this is basically a reflection of their experience uh, on, as uh, working women. We're going to miss you. We're I'll be around for my own. All right. Uh, bueno, miren, este, ahora vamos a presentar a unas compañeras. Que si, ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Las malcriadas? Yeah. Okay. We're going to be presenting the compañeras that we're going to be reading poetry. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, ¿cómo se dice malcriadas? What's that blonde hair doing there in my ankle? <laughs> Disturbing the peace? What peace? If it had no color to my skin, Uncle Group would I be in? If I had no color to my skin, would I be red? I'd be Indian. If I had no color to my skin, would I have my color promises? If I had no color to my skin, would I be light? Would I be white? Would I be dark? Or which would we be pumped? No hay líneas, fronteras, gabachos, ni hueras. Y a veces, a veces, la raza son más gachos que gabacho. Y tú, brute, enfócate. Y tú, brute, enfócate. What's that blonde hair doing there in my taco? Disturbing the peace. What peace? If I had no color to my skin, a group would I be in? If I had no color to my skin, would I be red? I'd be Indian. If I had no color to my skin, would I have my color promises? If I had no color to my skin, would I be light? Would I be white? Would I be dark? Or which would we be pumped? No hay líneas, fronteras, gabachos, ni hueras. Y a veces, a veces, la raza son más gachos que gabacho. Y tú, brute, enfócate. Y tú, brute, enfócate. Up to California, from Mexico, The border towns and brown frowns 
And the sign say, get back, quit back. You know, the soul I searched that night by that silver flashlight. The gringos and greasers play cat and mouse. And I still wonder why. I still wonder why. I still wonder why. Do apple pie do lie? The sign say, live the American way. You can visit, but don't stay away. Be a friendly neighbor. Have good cheap labor. There's rows and rows of illegal Star Wars, Spielberg, aliens are like the blind. As the morning shots fill, the morning chill, and still, and still, we will not, we will not go away. No way, Jose. What are you? Band is spent from the king, and your age is 41. Like that. Children's eyes are smiling, their lives have just begun. Children's eyes are smiling, and their lives have just begun. El que entró y que nunca salió de Guantanamo. El que entró y que nunca salió y que siempre sufrió Guantanamo. No more, no more, no more Guantanamo. No more, no more, no more Guantanamo. No more, no more, no more Guantanamo. Basta. No me aguanta el amor. El que sufrió y que nunca salió y ser humano siempre sufrió. Me aguanta el amor. Basta, basta, ya, gracias. Y arriba, y arriba, ay, 
had a song that included everybody. And they said, um, let's go comrades, let's go buddies, let's go friends, uh, let's go struggle until the struggle ends. And who shall start first? Well, the students. Or who shall start first? But the workers. Or who shall start first? First, but the women. Or who? And so on and so on. And this song is called Vamos Camaradas. Let's go comrades. Uh, a student contribution uh, at, in that area. sound to it, 
And so what I'm going to do right now is give you the hint to the song, the all-time party song, at Rasa Parties, um, and tell you three versions that came out of that. And the three, same chord pattern that the original one, and it was not called La Bamba. It was called La Bomba.
Washington's birthday. <laughs> and then he said, he's the father of your country. And I said, no, Benito Juarez is the father of my country. And anyway, Washington was a Chicano. Like me. 